Where do you think you could find the latest technology on display? An airport? An office building? How about a dumpling shop? Welcome to Brooklyn Dumpling Shop. It's the latest creation of restaurateur Stratus Morfogan, a small shop that sells a wide variety of dumplings and spring rolls in all types of unique flavors. French onion soup dumplings, anyone? But the good stuff lies outside the dough. This restaurant is 100% contactless from payment to pickup. The secret ingredient, a modernized automat machine. You can order from your phone anywhere within a few miles of the restaurant. You get on, you order your products, you agree on a time, and then you receive a barcode confirming everything that you have agreed upon. And at that point, when the product is ready, the product will go through the back end of the system. These lockers are 110 degrees at red and 35 degrees at blue. The cooks in the back will put the food in the product and all they hit is one button hitting ready. You come and you just walk right up to the automat and wave your phone and that locker will open automatically. So how did Morfogan come up with this invention of the future? He looked to the past. Automats first came out in the late 19th century and boomed in popularity over the next several decades. They were basically cafeterias with food vending machines. You push a button, drop your coins in a slot, lift the lid, and get your dish. Actress Doris Day shows you how it's done in the movie That Touch of Mink. It was a very big Hollywood thing in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, up to the 60s. What happened was in the 70s, technology failed the automat. And that's what happened here, is that you couldn't use a dollar bill, you couldn't use a credit card processor. Um, you basically had to go there with quarters in your hand or wait online to get quarters to use the automat. And that's when the automat fell out of favor. And again, technology killed the automat. And what I believe, if we could do driverless cars, it was time to bring the automat back because I did it on two things, efficiency and economics. A third-generation restaurant owner, Morfogan has 34 years of experience in the business. He wanted to take a shot at taking a beloved relic from the past and making it work for today's times. I remember when my dad took me to Horn and Hatter, uh, I think it was on Broadway, right before watching the movie Rocky, like in 1975 or 76. I think I was 10 years old. And I remember the automat. It was fun. It was like a vending machine. You know, and I was like, you know, that was such a great model. With technology today, it was so right to bring it back. And just allowing your phone to be full control. We don't need cashiers. We don't need hosts or people handling logistics. And that's the beauty of having the automat. With that, we were pretty confident with all the financial models that we've done, is that we've knocked off 20 to 30% off our payroll. Working with tight budgets has certainly been an issue in an industry that continues to be crippled by the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the NPD Group, customer transactions at major full-service restaurant chains were down 33% in February compared to a year ago, and major QSR transactions declined by 12% versus the previous year. Technology is going to be one of the key drivers uh, of the restaurant industry going forward. Uh, this is the trajectory that we were on pre-pandemic. Uh, as uh, the labor market was tight, the labor was becoming increasingly expensive. And so technological solutions that uh, take friction out of the system, um, make the, the transactional experience smoother and, and more automated, uh, and even technology in the back of the house that would tend to automate things, I think are all going to be part uh, of the future of restaurants. Some experts believe that businesses with the same creativity as the Brooklyn Dumpling Shop could be a way to help restaurants not only survive, but thrive. Taking something nostalgic and making it right for today is a winning formula. We know that, and I think that that's really engaging to consumers. Something like the Brooklyn Dumpling Shop is offering a personalized or customized experience. You choose what you want. It comes out in a little window just for you. You're operating it via your phone. It feels really exciting and engaging, and I think kind of sexy. And I think those are the kinds of experiences that, um, that restaurants need to be thinking about how to deliver to consumers. For Morfogan, it's all about thinking creatively to rise above these tough times. There's no, uh, you know, scarlet letter that you failed. Many great restaurateurs have failed, you know, and it's, not, it's nothing to be ashamed about. But let's pick ourselves back up. We have our intellectual property that we just lost 
due to the COVID shutdown. We have our health, our strong legs, our feet, our hands. Let's get back together, get yourself up, and reopen. For the Food Institute, I'm Susan Choi.